Hey everybody, it's Nate Picos of Blambot and welcome to Lettering Live. I was just working on this uh, brand new font in Font Lab and it was a perfect opportunity to visually demonstrate the difference between kerning and spacing. I get asked that quite a bit. So in essence, spacing is the default negative space around a particular glyph. Kerning is an adjustment made between two glyphs. So here we are in Font Lab, and this is uh, the bold version of a new font, as I said, and I was just uh, starting to kern it. So let's just open up a letter here. Let's open up, uh, let's say, the H. So in this space, you can see there's a letter, and there's these white lines on either side. This is spacing. See this negative space? This is the default. If there were no kerning in this font, then everything the H uh, appeared before or after would use this default spacing. So that's what spacing is. And this can be adjusted based on a letter. So uh, here you can see these numbers down here. This is These are units of measurement uh, of the negative space between uh, the letter and this line and this line. So on one side it's 53, it should be 54. Let me adjust that. And this changes based on font. Uh, you, you know, it's like this amount of space is completely up to the typographer. It's about looking at the letters as a whole. Are they very wide? Are they very narrow? Are they thick? Are they not? And seeing what looks best to your eye when you do lots of strings of letters together. So that's spacing. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, another good example of spacing is the T. This is a little bit tighter. This is, if you'll notice here, it sh this should be 42. Change that. 42 and 42 on either side. And this is just when I'm creating a font, I generally come up with two numbers. I come up with a slightly wider a spacing and a slightly narrower spacing. And the slightly narrower spacing is for letters like a T, because visually. The T has so much negative space, you know, down in the middle and the bottom over here, that you want to space it a tiny little bit tighter. It'll help later when you're kerning. Same thing with letters like an A. This also has the 42 on either side as opposed to the 54. The 54 was the, uh, the H that we started with right here. See, 54 and 54. Slightly wider because there's not a lot of negative space to clash against other letters. So that's what spacing is. And I'm going to show you over here. So this is uh, the kerning window. And I have long strings for every letter, or for basically almost for every glyph. I'm going to pull over a document over here. This is my sort of proprietary list of kerning pairs that I check every font against. And this is this whole thing is probably about 15,000 kerning pairs or so. I haven't counted but I'm guessing and I've added to it over the course of 20 years so you can see S is over here T is here U V W you know all the way down and all the numbers and etc and etc cetera, et cetera. but T is a good example of kerning because there's a lot of negative space at the bottom so you'll see here I already kerned the T and the A because the the A is wide at the bottom and the T let me zoom in a little bit and the T is wide at the top so they have to be scooted together to look, you know, to look right, basically. There's a lot of, in, in font design, there's a lot of, does this look right, as opposed to, does this measure correctly? So let me show you a good example. I haven't kerned, let's see, the T with an M. Okay, right here. See, these are just default spaced. There's space, let me zoom way in here. See the M? probably has, let's see, like an imaginary line between them would be right here. But it looks too wide, right? Like there's too much space in between. So I grab it and I move it. And you can see that number just appeared. And I'll tighten this up. So the software remembers kerning pairs. So as you're typing with the final font in whatever graphics program or word processing program, all these little adjustments that I'm making in kerning uh, the, the software remembers it 
and it adjusts automatically as you're using the font. Like, see, the C is too far away, and this goes here. And after you've done this a million times, I mean, it's it's mind-numbing work, but your eye just gets really good at finding and fixing this negative space. Is it too tight? Is it too close? And if you did a good job of spacing these glyphs, kerning will be easier. So like this G is, is a little too far away. There's a lot of negative space in here. So I'm going to move it just a little bit and that T a little bit. And um, now I'm scanning across what needs to be. Look at the L and the T. See how far apart they are? They shouldn't be that far apart, right? When you're typing, it'll look like there's a space there. So you slide the T over and you, you just sort of soft focus your eyes and look at negative versus positive space. And that's what your adjustments are made on. So I'm just going to keep going here, kerning the T. It's a little weird to be talking while I'm doing this. Uh, w, X, this X could move over a little bit. That's fine, fine. This could come over a little bit. And I'm going to adjust this so I can see that C it needs to move over. This G, this T, that's fine, fine. This needs adjustment. There's that L and T again. And this, you'll notice these lists of letters, they are both the uppercase and lowercase um, slots, even though this font is all caps. And it's both the lowercase against itself, or you know, other letters of lowercase and uppercase letters. And here we go with the S. This moves over. Where am I? This is that was the capital S versus a lowercase t. This would probably be a better demonstration if I was using a sentence case font instead of an all caps one. But this is what I was working on today. So this is where you're getting. Uh, the C could move in a little bit. I'm going to shrink this all back down because I know that T is going to need adjustment there. Uh, here we go with the G's again. We can slide that. Open this up because I need to. It's these strings, there's a lot of redundancy in my list, so if I miss something here, I'll probably catch it later in a different, well, I'm kerning a different letter. But that G, there, there's that L and T again. This time it's the uh, lowercase L and T. The M, uh, the O, just a little bit. Scroll down, almost done. Q, T, R, this S could move in a little bit. Those are fine. That might move in. Fine, fine. A little bit here, a little bit there. And if I turn this on, these are all, this is the list of kerning pairs here. And you can see I've just, I mean, technically I'm not up to the T's yet. I just used the T as an example. I just spot another one right there. But uh, I think I'm up to the B's at this point. And see this number, 483? That's the amount of kerning pairs that are currently in this font. And I'm only up to B. So having taken a look at how many glyphs are in a font, I think you can appreciate how long uh, and, and what a and sort of arduous job it is to kern a font. And I know you can't see it. I'm using a two monitor setup. There is something called kerning classes, which um, I can pull this window in over here. I have all my work windows on the side uh, monitor. And this is kerning classes. This is where you set these up before you ever start kerning. And this helps the typographer kern more quickly because I can say, OK, here's the lowercase e, right? Every other kind of lowercase e, all the accented versions that you can see here, this tells the program that all these other E's should be kerned just like its root uh, glyph or letter here, in this case, the regular E. So, you know, E circumflex, E grave, E acute, all these things, without me having to go in and kern each of these, will just adopt the kerning from the, the regular E. So that's class kerning. And you do that first before you kern anything. So I know this is a bit overwhelming and a little technical and not as creative as uh, most of my lettering lives are, but that's the difference between spacing and kerning. Spacing is the default space around a glyph, and kerning is the individual adjustments made between letters or glyphs. Okay, I hope that clears it up, and thanks for watching.